Hi, this is Matthew Conklin, welding application engineer here at ABB Robotics, Auburn Hills. I'm here today to talk to you about SmartTac. SmartTac is a tactile and non-tactile sensing. SmartTac can be used to find inconsistent part fit up, location, and be used to offset the program in order to update the positions. SmartTac can be added to an existing program or as you program. SmartTac can be configured to run off a SmartTac board or it can be configured right from the power supply. For SmartTac, you have three different variants for where you can sense the part. You have tactile for wire, tactile for gas cup, and then you also have non-contact in the Laser 1D. So Laser SmartTac can dramatically reduce the cost of fixturing and reduce downtime and programming by using the different methods of updating your positions via offsets. Now we're gonna go over to Robot Studio and I'm gonna show you how to configure SmartTac in the installation manager to either make sure that you have the correct options available and or added. From the drop down menu, system info, system properties, drive module, robot one, options. And you can see here we have option number 657-1 SmartTac IO version. So you can see that this is available. So from Robot Studio, you can see that I'm plugged in here through the service port of the robot. We are gonna to go to Installation Manager. So since I'm plugged into the service port of the robot, I'm gonna be on the Network tab. I'm gonna be on this controller since it's through the service port. The IP address is 125.1. And the system that I'm gonna want is going to be this first system. So from here, I would do next. So you can see the products currently, the licenses, and then we would do another next to get to system options here. So from when with system options, we would go over to the next tab, which is drive modules. We'd scroll down and we'd see underneath the ARC apps application, we see tracking and searching. We'd drop down that carrot and we see SmartTac IO, option number 657-1. We would want that option. If it's not available here, then you would probably need a license key update for this particular option. Now, because this is a Lincoln welder with the add-in, SmartTac is also configured through the welder itself and not through the SmartTac board. So we would need to select this option too. And then click next. And then you can see all the options and then you can see the two options that we added. We added option number 657-1 SmartTac IO and then the SmartTac configuration for the Lincoln power supply. And then we would apply then ask us for right access, which you can see here. And we would want to hit grant. And then you're going to see that it is granted access. And then we would want to say, yes, we want to continue. Now, as this prepares right here, this is gonna take a few minutes. And now, here we are. So now it's asking you, do you wanna restart the controller? We're gonna say yes. And now the controller will go through a restart. And the system will come back up with SmartTac activated. From here, go ahead and close out your installation manager. Now the system has come back up. After it's done its restart, you can see we're connected here. 
And in order to see if the changes have been implemented, one way that you can go about it through Robot Studio is do properties, controller properties, system properties, additional options, uh, Lincoln ArcLink XT options, and then you can see include smart configuration. And then drive module option, and then you can see our smart tack option here. So here we are inside one of our FlexArc cells where I'm going to demonstrate smart tack for you guys. The first thing I'm going to demonstrate is the representation of a weld. So we have a smart or start point. And then we're going to have an endpoint. That's typically a weld. This is just real generic. Now, the problem becomes if we were to move the part. So now where SmartTac comes into play is we have a SmartTac 1D search instruction, which it'll search one dimension. In this case, it's going to be for our start position and our end position. So here we have our start position for our search our end position for our search, and you can see the contact. So, and then again, we have start, end. So that would be your search. So now with those searches, we would have offset data. And then you would apply that offset data and then touch up your start positions. So you would do what we call p -disc set. Set that offset active. Come down to your position where you want to start, jog your robot into that position, and modify it with that offset active. Now do the same thing for your endpoint. For this case, we're going to put our pose 2 active for our end position, and we're going to modify that. Okay, now from there, what we would do is to demonstrate how this works is I'm actually going to move the part now and we are going to search found the part search found the part and you can see that it's going right along the same path based off of the offset Thank you for your time, I appreciate it, and thank you for watching this video on SmartTech.